So hello everyone, this is a, a Jupyter development meeting for October 4th, 2016. We have a lot of people around, but not many of them want to uh, talk about their update. Um, so let's see in order. Um, we have Carol, but Carol might not be able to, to speak. So I will try to um, read her summary for her. Um, so she's working on upgrading the docs for Jupyter Hub 0.7, and she will be at the Jupyter deployment for teaching. Uh, and also we'll look at NBGrader. Um, she said she had a nice teamwork with Michael Pacer on NBConvert, uh, as well as Grant and Silva on IPy widget docs, and she's preparing for Grace Hopper. Okay, once you can talk, Carol, feel free to um, take the mic if you have things to add. That's pretty much it. Um, you know, other than other good stuff. So um, that's it for me. Okay, great. So Min is the next who wants to talk. Min. Uh, yeah, not too much. Just updates with the uh, Jupyter Hub stuff is getting just about ready. Working with Carol on the docs and testing deployments for. Ryan, but I'll be um, working with uh, uh, Peter on, on some stuff for Pseudosmonitor, but I'll be shipping out almost all of those packages probably in the next week or so. OK, great. Paul, you're next. <clears throat> yep. yeah, there you go. Um, just uh, wrapped up the um, Jupyter Lab uh, launcher. It's the Jupyter Labians. Want to take a look at that uh, one more time? Thanks, Darren, for your feedback earlier. Um, and everyone else, really. Um, and then I'm trying to figure out what to do next. So if anyone has uh, suggestions, uh, that's great. Otherwise, I'll just find my own things to do. It's a very interesting scene behind you, Paul. Is it a dungeon or something nicer? So uh, it's something nicer. Okay. <laughs> I'm on the I'm on the 23rd floor uh, of a really nice building. So yeah. That could still be a dungeon, to be fair. Twenty third floor dungeon, yes. I mean, the Tower of London was very tall. <laughs> and somehow I managed to derail these meetings every time. Sorry. Well, to be fair, that was Pete's fault. Yeah, that was, that was not your fault. I had to ask. I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Nicholas. Okay. Uh, so I've been pushing and be convert a bit with um, with Mike and not trying to decide exactly what the next step are. Uh, we are still going to have 5.0 out soonish, but I think Mike will update us on that soon. Um, and I've been working on some uh, some side projects. Also, it's, uh, it's Hacktoberfest uh, because we're in October. Um, Digital Ocean uh, can send you a free t-shirt if you make more than four PRs. Um, on various repositories that are participating to Hacktoberfest. And um, unlike last year, instead of taking everything, um, they ask project to use the Hacktoberfest label for issues they want to be um, tackled, because some projects were annoyed that user would come and take random things just to get PRs. Um, so I've created at least one issue on uh, IPython with the Hacktoberfest label. I haven't touched other repository, but if you want to mentor users for Hacktoberfest and things that are easy to do, um, I was suggesting that depending on who is governing each project, we decide whether or not to uh, create a Hacktoberfest label and um, assign it to a few issues. And that's about it for me. Um, we have Darian, I think, after. Um, so there was um, a change to the way the inspector works, but now it's sort of um, unintuitive because uh, it used to be in the sidebar, but now that it's in a, a, a tab, um, first off, it should be closable, and it's not. Uh, secondly, um, we had two levels of inspection, but last week we put the um, pager output in line. So now we only have 
um, hints in the inspector. So there aren't two tabs in there anymore. So really, I think what it ought to be is just a single normal pane with content in it and not a tab panel. And also, um, it should be closable. So I'm going to fix that now because I think it <clears> actually <throat> looks broken. Um, but yeah, so last week uh, we decided to put pager output inline. I don't know if you've noticed, it's sort of um, a departure, but kind of interesting. And um, yeah, that's it for me. I'm I'm curious about how it affects other kernel because we using pager for some information and other kernel might use it differently. Um, and having it in line is just imagine I'm sorry. Might, might not be the right the right. Your system. microphone is 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 being um, moved around, so I wasn't really hearing you very well. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, I'm curious to see for other kernel how it affects the. Uh, like if a notebook makes sense. Because I can imagine that the Haskell or the R kernel might be using the pager in a, maybe a different way. Um, yeah. So I, I would like just want to, to uh, make sure it doesn't completely break the expectation of other kernel. Because yeah, we, that's, can also, that's we can also switch the tag at, at, Python, at IPython level instead of doing a Jupyter Lab, uh, Jupyter Lab level. Yeah, um, that is a good point. Um, I don't really use other kernels, so I don't have any idea about it. Um, but it's a thing we'll just keep an eye on, and if it's if it's the wrong move or if it's implemented the wrong way, we'll just fix it as it comes up. But I, I don't I don't really know, so I don't have an opinion on it. Yeah, it would be good to find authors from other kernel and ask them what to think about this change. Um, I don't know why. I think most like can being the Julia team, the Haskell team. And the R team and say, hey, here is a change. Does it make sense with your kernel? Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's kind of two. There's kind of two changes, right? There's because IPython can make this change independent of the protocol to just stop sending pager stuff, but also um, the front end front ends can say maybe we don't actually want this pager thing to behave like that. Yeah, that's right. So we're sort of hacking it. Uh, what happens is uh, when that signal, when that when that message comes through, I actually spoof and pretend instead of it being pager data, instead of it being uh, what the server said, I set it to be a display data message. Um, so it's not really the clean solution. Um, somebody's uh, echoing. Somebody's echoing. It might be on um, and uh, so so it's not I, I I don't actually imagine this is the best way of doing it if we make a decision that that's how we're doing it we may as well just change pages to be display data the reason it's being done this way is because we sort of wanted an immediate effect on how to modify the inspector but it could be that this is not the long-term way of doing it at all when one other effect is that now the legacy notebook and JupyterLab behave differently, um, which might get confusing if we want a smooth transition for users. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I th I think it is appropriate to revisit. Like, we don't want to say that the that JupyterLab should behave exactly the same as the existing notebook because it the transition allows us to make to make different decisions and reconsider things. Okay, so let's let's respond uh, an issue somewhere and rediscuss that um, potentially pinging people from Brian might have already might have done that last week. Oh okay. I haven't seen it. Sorry. It was either the mailing list or an issue or something. I think the mailing list actually. Okay, so let's, do you have anything else? So let's move to Mike. Oh, good. Thanks. All right, so um, uh, with uh, help from Carolyn Matias, uh, we were able to figure out some of the stuff that's been breaking our read the doc builds for a really long time. Uh, and it had to do with this weird dependency on NB Sphinx where if we weren't explicitly 
um, installing NB Convert. Uh, we, uh, it was installing it for us, which was then shadowing the actual code that we were supposed to be building our docs off of. And so errors were happening because of that. So jumped into the comp.py, just like had a, uh, a an execute like uh, list of strings and now it's pip installing it editably. I was wondering from anyone who's more in touch with the Conda uh, in environment, uh, is there a way in the environment.yaml to actually specify that you want an editable install, possibly to a relative location of where you are? Because that would have solved this problem too. And that was one of the things that I was trying to work with and it wasn't going well. You. You you want it in, in the test environment? In the in the doc building environment. Oh, uh, I mean you can always conda install dash f right inside your build step. Uh, but there's make... no way in the environment .yaml specifically under pip to just say nb convert dash e and oh. it'll then go and find the like and then possibly uh the relative location from where you were because that wasn't working uh, oh if it wasn't working then it wasn't work i mean i thought it could do dash e and then the full git plus whatever but if you tried that you also can't do that because then if you push that to the uh to your actual uh repo then you lose the ability to have branched um documentation because then it'll always point to whatever the top level of if you have a specific git address um and yeah. you can't but if, if it otherwise e would be works, just a mess to me too you can use a local path so if dash e works at all it doesn't you should be able to. that's the problem yeah. all um, right but you shouldn't need to do an editable install at all you should be able to pip install okay. the package it, and it, so is this is this just sorry I'm, I'm not familiar exactly with the the build environment like are you actually doing a conda build or you're just running some stuff inside an environment where you got some kind of stuff? Uh, just uh, running stuff inside an environment where Conda is being used as the way to build the environment with oh. a standard environment diameter. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'll have to look into that. Did you did you make an issue for it someplace? I can uh, partially no, because I couldn't figure out exactly where to make the issue. There were also some other weird conda bugs that I also couldn't figure out exactly where to make the issue, um, but that uh, had to do specifically with read the docs. Well, let's let's do something. Uh, um, so conda env used to be its own separate uh, Git repository and is now actually part of conda itself. So any like so conda env is the tooling that's used with environment.yamls. So any issue with that, you can just post directly against conda. Um, is, okay. There's no separate repository for Conda Env anymore. Uh, regarding the editable installs, I have, I mean, I, I feel like I'm pretty knowledgeable about Conda, and I have no idea how you would even do that with just one environment. .yaml. I mean, do you do you have the option to like give a list of commands? Like you could just create the environment and then uninstall. That's what I ended up doing was uh, going into the Conda.py, which syncs runs, and then passing in the pip command directly, yeah, I mean, like after it had already been installed. The problem was that doing it any other way was ending up shadowing it. And it wasn't, and it wasn't accept, wasn't accepting, wasn't accepting a relevant environment.yaml on a read the docs build, even though that worked locally. And one other thing about read the docs, the conda builds can be very temperamental in their containers. They don't always um, restart or, or clean and wipe uh, neatly, so that adds another layer of complexity. One thing we could try and do is try and build it with pip, but and do a requirements.txt. But that's what we were doing before, and then we upgraded to Conda, um, and then this is just something that was coming up. But now we've solved it, and if anyone else runs into this kind of problem where you do have some other package that you're dependent upon installing yourself and then shadowing you. Uh, this is one way around it is to just jump right into the conf.py. Cool. 
Thanks. I missed something. I you you muted yourself, Mike. Oh, sorry. Um. So. So. Uh, we heard back from warehouse this morning. Uh, and so it looks like we might be able to move forward on that after a couple of weeks. And uh, I'm going to be reworking the architecture page uh, in NB Convert. If anyone has any comments, just watch for a PR. It's on its way. It's going to be pretty decently large, as I'm going to be reintroducing like images and stuff like that in order to explain it. Um, so yeah, uh, some other stuff, but that's mostly it. Thanks a lot. I think Anna, you're next. Anna, you're next. Yes. Hi, everyone. I just as a heads up, I don't have a good Wi-Fi connection right now. So at some point we have issues, you know, you know what happened. <laughs> um, I the only thing I want to share is pretty much to reiterate. We have um, long overdue announcement on our team meeting for the fall um, that is going to be November 7th through the 11th in San Luis Obispo. Um, I have some information in the Hackpad, which is linked um, to, to this meeting. And, um, you know, I'm happy to answer questions. I will continue updating that Hackpad with more details as we go along. But for now, just kind of letting that sink in. At some point next week, I will be reaching out to everyone to confirm uh, whether or not you plan on attending. Um, but that that's pretty much it for now. There's any questions, um, you know, you know where to find me. Thank you very much, Anna. Um, did I forget someone? Okay. So last uh, message, we are trying to rework a bit the governance structure uh, we are discussing some changes in the Jupyter slash governance repository. Well, if you're just listening and not part of the team, if you're part of the community, you are listening. Um, so come to this discussion and um, say what you think about the change we are proposing. That would be great. We'd like to have your input. And can otherwise, you, can you drop a link to that on the on the hackpad? Yeah, I will add that later. It's it's supposed to be just Jupyter slash governance. And there is only a, a couple of open issues, so it should be pretty easy. It should be issue 19. Let me add that. So thank you everyone for watching and being here today. Um, see you next week. <laughs>